If you've been wondering if Morfolio Trace or SketchUp for iPad can help you in your real-world architectural practice, then you've come to the right place. In this video, you'll see how our two-person office designed, dimensioned, built a 3D model, and prepared quick color sketches that sold the project using only Morfolio Trace and SketchUp for iPad. That house is now being built, but everything up to the point of drawing the design in CAD was done on an iPad. And after you watch this video, you'll know you can do it too. Ready? The most important factors determining the design were this hilltop site that the client found in upstate New York, and their love for Italian farmhouses and farmhouses with courtyards and drive throughs especially, and also their love for Bjark Ingels' design for the new Noma restaurant in Copenhagen. And we actually began by diagramming a modified version of that project in plan, then importing that topo map into Morfolio so we could begin a site analysis. And for the purpose of this project, I went up into the settings menu and I activated what is called the uh, time-lapse recording so that we can follow along without my hand necessarily blocking things from the overhead shot. So I began by situating that uh, Bjark diagram or something similar to it on the south with a courtyard opening to the sun. And the beauty of a digital drawing app like Morfolio is that you can make all kinds of variations of that very quickly and study what might have the most promise going forward. And once the client picked a scheme to go forward with, I used the Morfolio scaling at eighth inch in this case, and just started to roughly lay out what those masses might look like. Now this is a highly compressed version of the process because we have so much to cover, but you can see how that continues to develop through different iterations always with an eye to scale, but not necessarily officially drafting yet, just getting closer and closer with freehand. And I use this moment to start working out some dimensions, also freehand, going room by room. And then as I get closer, I use the scale and, and make more precise dimensions. And my goal here is to get to a point where I can export this plan to SketchUp and immediately know how big things are. And this is what that freehand plan looks like. And you can see me here even adding a sketch or a section because I need to know the heights I'm going to be working with in SketchUp. So to export this file to SketchUp, I'm going to tap the export sign up here at the top right. I don't need both of these pages, so I'm going to turn off the lower one and just send through the final result. I'm going to save it to my iCloud Drive, call it something easy to recognize later on, export. And now I'll go to SketchUp. And the first thing you want to do is check this architectural feet and inches. Make sure you've got that set. Then launch a new document, create new. And one other quick thing to check up here in the settings gear, make sure you are in just draw mode if you're following along. That means everything will be done with a pencil. You don't have to combine finger gestures. Now I'm going to position the XYZ axes so I got a good swipe at things as I bring this file in. Now I tap the import image icon and select use as image object, then browse files and I locate the file that I exported from Morfolio. And even though it seems like nothing has happened, what I do is just tap here at the origin and that plan appears and I pull it across. And of course it's not to scale so I'm going to locate these two dimensions here to make them as accessible as possible. And I'm going to tap the measuring tape tool now. And let me just twist this plan a little bit more so it's a perfectly horizontal extension of the tool. And I'll stretch that tool across. And I don't really care what shows up in the length dialog box because I'm going to tap inside it and then put in the length that I want. So SketchUp will ask me, is this what you want to do? And I'm Yes, please. And then that comes in so big or it suddenly explodes that I have to use two fingers to pinch it back down. And now you can see that I'm more or less to scale. And the last thing I'll do is tap the move tool and drag the origin of the plan that I imported over to the XYZ axis origin and SketchUp. And now I'm ready to go. Now the look the client is going for is this farmhouse, low story building farmhouse with uniform roof pitches. So I'll check that section that I threw in at the last second just to make sure what my eave heights are going to be. And I know all the roof pitches will be the same. 
So that will be helpful as I develop this 3D model. Now, I like to draw from lower left to top right, so let me get this plan into position before I start stretching these dimension lines. And then I will tap the measuring tape tool, and we'll do that same thing again where we'll stretch it across between two known dimensions. And notice here that the length that's coming up is in these crazy fractions, which make no sense at the early stage concept design. So let me show you a trick. I'm going to go down here to the model info dialog box and I'll pop this open and I'll change the precision to one inch and then I'll make it so it snaps to one inch. And look at the difference when I pull this across now. It's still not exactly what I want, so I'm going to have to tap it and enter what I want. But I've eliminated those fractions of an inch that drive people crazy at this early concept design phase. Now, I don't know about you, but there's always a certain amount of head scratching that goes on with me at this phase as to what, to, what dimension to pull next. But I think if I work to these center lines, I'll be in good shape. A lot of this project is built on these center lines. So I'll locate that and then I'll ignore the 18 feet for a moment because that looks a little too big and I'll go 14 feet overall because this is after all a drive through and I don't want any cars hitting either side of this thing, especially after big fun Christmas parties. So uh, let's come back here and then finish off the rest of these dimensions. I know that this utility room is going to be about seven feet, five feet for passage and two feet for closets. And I'll add these exterior wall thicknesses. Now let me twist the plan and let's come back the other way. And again, and I'm going to, I'm probably getting too precise with some of these, but I'll work to these center lines. I don't know that I need exterior wall thicknesses. And I'll just uh, make it so that I've got whatever I need only to build a Massey model. So my guidelines are in place. And now I am going to tap the rectangle tool. A little difficult to find sometimes. I'll tap one origin, stretch it all the way across. Now I'll tap the push me, pull you tool. And I'll bring it up to 10 foot 8. And that snaps to 10 foot 8. That's lucky. Sometimes you have to enter it by hand, but that works. Uh, just a quick power tip before we go forward. If I tap on this object three times, it'll select the entire object. Then I can come down to the context menu of the selection tool and tap the grouping icon. And then when I tap it, you can see the whole group is activated. And this is a little subtle, but down here in the context menu now, you can see that there is no grouping option, that it just shows you that the group has already been made. So because of all the pieces of this model, I'm also going to tag this, and I'll create a new tag, and I will call it the Garage Studio. I'll enter that by tapping my finger in the dialog box. I'll enter Garage Studio using the keyboard. And I'll tap OK, and there it appears. Now, if I highlight the Garage Studio tag, then just tap that object one time with the selection tool. That becomes tagged, as simple as that. And I just turn it on or off using these icons to the left of the names. And this is really going to help you keep all of the pieces of this model straight. Now, there are so many ways to do these things in SketchUp, but uh, I'm going to build a 7 over 12 roof pitch now. And I'll use the measuring tool to come across 12 feet. Then I'll go up seven feet. And of course my building is not 24 feet wide, so I need to come strike the center line. And then I'll take another measuring tool up to that center line. And I'll complete the triangle by drawing with the pencil just to form that vertex. And once I do that, ah, uh, now, and you can see the problem that groups, at least that I get into with groups, and that is that I've drawn those lines outside of the group. So I'll undo that, and let me use the selection tool to activate the group. I'll tap three times. And now you can see the guidelines are light, but they're still going to work. And I can use the pencil to come up and complete that roof pitch. And suddenly the entire roof pitch appears. And now I can use the push me pull you tube to pull that roof triangle all the way across and complete that volume. So good old groups. You have to really be aware of where you are. Am I going too fast? Am I going too slow? We have a lot of ground to cover it. And I really want to fly through here after just teaching a few of the basics. But I don't want to take too long because we can always come back and make a video just about this. So let me just put a few more details into the garage studio part of the project. And just to give you a sense of how simple that is. 
And now I'll switch over to this greenhouse component and quickly do the base rectangle the same way we've been doing it. Rectangle tool and then push me pull your tool up to 10 foot 8. But I want to quickly show you how two familiar tools work in SketchUp for iPad. And the first one is the move tool in copy mode. So if I select the move tool, then tap the copy mode in the context icon. Then I select the far edge of this roof and highlight it in blue and drag it across. It moves the thing like it normally does, but then if I tap in the dialog box, I can do that thing we used to do where you use a forward slash to divide by a certain number of divisions, or you can use a asterisk to multiply. And here I'm dividing by eight divisions this time. And this is really where SketchUp as a design tool comes in. You're not just building a 3D model that you happen to be designing the rest of the way in plan, but you're really using it to make important choices. So again, you tap that, divide it by nine again, and I'm back to that. And that works better with my plan as it turns out. So I'll stick with that. And then I'll do the same thing for the lower mullions. And the second tool I want to talk about is the offset tool. So I'll go ahead and build this great room massing model right now. And I'll pop up the roof the way we said, using the measuring tool to go with a 712 pitch. I'll use the push me pull you to create that volume. Now I'll erase that middle bar and now, now the plan here before we're over is to create one of those classic all glass scape lens and whoops, didn't mean to give it away, but I guess you'll have to stay until the end now, huh? So in order to do that, I'm gonna go back to the toolbar and I'm gonna go inside the menu with the three dots at the bottom and find the offset tool and I'll activate the offset tool. I'll touch it in that gable area and I'll go out to eight inches. It's probably thinner than it really will be. And that looks pretty good. And then I'll just complete those because I want to push it. Well, wait, I want to keep that ground level at plus eight inches. So I think I will go back and I'll just push me, pull you that in a little bit. So it shows up in the model, give it about a four inch offset and we'll keep going. So this model gets pretty repetitive building all these similar volumes, but the topo that the model sits on is kind of exciting. And I wanted to make sure that I create some representation of this dramatic hillside or edge of the hillside setting, taking advantage of all these views. So I put a little extra time into these terraces and decks off the back, but more importantly, once they're built, I'm going to go in and just make some basic representation of that topo. So I'll add this huge rectangle underneath the model and then I'll use the freehand drawing tool to actually kind of sculpt these topographic lines. I'm making these up but they're very similar to what actually exists. And this tool is a little sketchy. I have to make sure all of these lines complete themselves all the way out to the perimeter. And here again is the value of working with tags. So I'm hiding all of these objects that I drew before so I can get those lines to carry all the way through without any complications. And again, I gotta make all these little closures. And then once everything's tightened up perfectly, I can select it and raise it and lower. I'll go two feet with each of these to give the general idea of the topo. And again, I'll use that dialog box to make it exact. I'll come back in and I'll turn all my tags back on and let's see what we have. Well, there's the floor plan, but I can turn that off. And one, two, three, turn off the floor plan. And we're looking pretty good. It's enough to work with when we start to choose some scenes over in more folio trace. Oh, did I mention we're going back to more folio trace? Let's have some fun, let's do it. So here's the finished model. You can see I've thrown in a couple of Citron de Chevaux just for good measure. And now I'll come up to the top left of the screen, hit the home button. I'll tap these three dots at my file and I'll go to the export USDZ choice. And Morfolio Trace comes up as an actual destination for this export. So there's no iCloud drive first. And in comes the model. And it's a little alarming when it comes in sideways, but just change the orientation, choose the Z axis up and hit the green checkpoint. It'll disappear for a second, but it'll come back in the Morfolio workspace ready for you to choose the views and play with Shadow Maker. Now to begin choosing views, I'm gonna come up to this cube up top and tap it. And you'll see the menu appear at the bottom of the screen. These are the views to date that I can string through. 
and I can just start rotating the model. Use one finger to rotate, two fingers to pinch and zoom, and a pan. And I'll just start looking for what views are going to be most useful for this upcoming client meeting I have, where I really want to sell the idea of this courtyard, farmhouse, the whole romance of the approach to this building, coming through the building into this beautiful courtyard. I like this approach view here, but I'm actually going to tap on the settings wheel. I'm not going to use Shadow Maker yet, but instead I'm going to change the field of view so I can get a sense of whether I want a wide angle lens or a telephoto lens at this point. I think the wide angle lens tells the story a little bit better, so I'll add that view to my menu at the bottom. And once I press done, well, we'll get back to that later. And I want to be, make a view over here in the courtyard. This is actually the kitchen garden outside of the greenhouse. They've got it walled in so that uh, they can try and control wild deer and other animals getting into the garden. And I'll use that field of view again. Now I'm going to try adjusting the shadows because I want to see as much as possible and make the architecture as clear as possible from this view. So maybe something like this with the shadow behind me, the sun behind me, um, kind of a mid-afternoon western view. Now let's rotate around, and this could be the money shot. This is sort of looking while we hover over the edge of the cliff, looking back at the house. And you can see how the terraces step down to that pool, which may or may not have an infinity edge, depending on the budget. I like that view, so let me check that one. Let's keep going. So I ended up with a number of views you see running across the menu here at the bottom, but I keep coming back to this one, the arrival view. So I'm going to hit done now, and we're going to start rendering this. So you can see the workspace comes up. And notice how when it does, the perspective view icon at the top of the screen becomes activated, meaning everything you draw from this point on will be in line with the vanishing points that are pre-selected by Shadow Maker. So having saved me that trouble, all I have to do is add a layer and I prefer the white trace and I reduce the opacity and I select the pencil and the line weight and the color that I want. And I'm just going to start what I would call a really quick pencil tracing. I'm not going to worry about lines crossing. I'm going to use those crossing lines as a source of character. I'm going to try and be very quick. This is supposed to be a quick presentation sketch that's showing the concept, not a full-blown rendering. And I think that quick line drawing approach conveys that to the client. And don't get me wrong, you can get quite a bit of detail in these things as with these very fine textured siding boards I'm putting in right now. But don't spend too much time. Just get enough character there that you can make the rest of this rendering happen. I also like to put a border around my drawings because that psychologically limits the work for me and makes me feel better about things. And you can see I have the scale ruler engaged for that and I've toggled it to 90 degrees. And now I just try to add content that was important to the design. As for the character of the drawing, the uh, drive through is obviously very important. The location at the edge of the woods is very important with some of these dramatic foreground trees. I'm a big fan of Frank Lloyd Wright's renderings and especially Marion Mahoney Griffin's renderings for Frank Lloyd Wright. The way they used line and just a little bit of color to create all the character they needed to. And that's what I'm going for here, trying to create the maximum character, but also a sense of spontaneity and that I didn't work too hard or overwork the design. Creating all of that with as few lines as possible and especially as we get into color. So I'm going to add a new layer and we start some color so I can keep all that separate, make changes if I have to. Then I'll pick a light blue color and I'm going to come down here to the um, paint roller brush, which is my favorite thing in Morfolio. And you can see that it's a whole different kind of thing. You kind of trace along the boundaries of what you want to color and the paint roller follows along with you and then as you release right at the end, it snaps the entire block of color into place. And it took some getting used to. Um, I didn't quite know what to think of it because I'm used to more painterly 
digital painting apps. But after a while, I saw the real strength in how direct and simple and especially how fast it is. These days, I liken it to kind of a vintage travel poster look where you almost like a silk screen with big areas of flat color. But I think that directness can really help convey what you're trying to talk about. And it doesn't look overly precious. It doesn't look like you wasted time on a design that the client hadn't yet approved or that maybe you you knew was going to go through some more changes. And I especially enjoy this part where you begin to add contrast to this otherwise fairly flat rendition so far. And of course, you've got to add some high touch color accents. And this, this is where that paint roller brush really comes into shining. I actually draw with it rather than, say, using a paintbrush to fill in these outlines. I'm very carefully, or not so carefully, tracing along these shapes and then creating very thin branches by just retracing my steps as close as possible to the original one. And I can switch to this green now and create this kind of background wash, this cool blue-green area that implies a certain amount of distance. I can then come back over that with a different green and get a layered effect starting. Uh, it's almost like a early Disney cartoon where you have a kind of a very simple color background with all the action in front of it. Anyway, you can make of it what you will, but I really enjoy this spontaneity of this whole thing. Um, and it's all about layers. So I'm going to even this layer out now. I'm going to add more in. I'm going to leave these gaps between areas of color, which imply different things going on. I'm not even sure what they are. They just seem to look good. I'll add more of this leafy material up above. And then I get to the shadows, and that's always my favorite part bring the shadows across because they're going to their own vanishing point. So they're helping to create depth in the drawing and they're helping to create that whole architectural perspectival understanding of this sketch. So even these shadows on the trees and the, on the shade side of the tree and making some of them darker where branches would come down and throw a shadow over the tree trunks it's just really a lot of fun and it goes very quickly and um, hopefully you think it looks okay. I could spend more time on it, but I really don't want to and I want to keep it loose and spontaneous just like this. Besides, I'm late for a client meeting. I've got a dozen more views to do and I better get busy. So if you made it all the way to the end and you've enjoyed this, then check out the link in the description below. Sign up for news of my upcoming online courses in Morfolio Trace, SketchUp for iPad, and Procreate. And I'll see you in the next video right up here to the top left of your screen.